she was going to do it. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's so exciting to be here. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, this is the first time I've been up here in five years. So let's hope I don't forget what to do or when to do it. Um, <laughs> But I would like to say good morning to everybody in the sanctuary and also those people watching us on Facebook. So let us give thanks for this day that the Lord has made, for I know we are glad to be in it. So in order for us to begin the morning on the right note, I would like for us to make a conscious, conscious intention of being here right now. So let's put aside the issues of life and be fully conscious in this moment. So I invite you to close your eyes, and I would like for you to drink in these words. I am a spark of divine love, and I am connected to an unlimited supply of ideas, solutions, and possibilities. As I am creating anything in my life, I remember that the truth is that I am creating with the Creator as the hands and feet of the divine. My intention for today is to approach each task before me with passion, energy, and gratitude. I am mindfully present in each moment, and I remember to practice self-compassion. I am open and receptive to those whispers of guidance that set me on the right path. I know this truth for myself and for all others, and it sets me free. And we all affirm together, and so it is. You will hear that several times. Thank you. So I would like to do a Bible verse this morning. It comes from Mark, chapter 5, verse 28, and that is the story of the woman who is hemorrhaging. Jesus passes by and she says to herself, if I, if I just even touch his garment, I shall be made well. So her faith in Jesus' ability to heal her is evidenced by what she is saying to herself. So what are you saying to yourself? Are you acknowledging as truth what you see in the outer appearance? Well, she did not do that. She held to the truth that she knew within her own consciousness. So we each live in a world of our own choosing, right? A world of consciousness. Many things may happen around us. They may even happen to us. But the most important part is what happens within us within our consciousness. <coughs> Emmett Fox said three very important words. Life is consciousness. So people out there may be saying all kinds of things, right? But what are you saying to yourself? Well, wherever you go, there you are. You cannot get away from yourself. So I would like for you to listen. I'd like you to pay attention to that inner voice. <coughs> so let's say our statement of being together here. God is all, both invisible and visible. One presence, one mind, one power is all. This one that is all is perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance. I am the individualized expression of God, and am ever one with this perfect life, perfect love, and perfect substance.
Now's the time in our service for the healing meditation. Dim those lights. You can turn them off if you want. Or not. We can't tell anyway. Thank you. So we're going to take some time right now to go within. And if it helps you to focus on the tinkling of the ivories over there, then do that also, because that takes your mind somewhere else. So I'm going to set the mood, along with the music, so that you can listen in to the still small voice. So please close your eyes and take a cleansing breath. close my eyes and I hear, I stand at the door and knock. The Christ within tells me this, the Christ within, God, infinite presence, that within me which knows, tells me, I am knocking on the door of your consciousness, waiting for you to let me in. I have something very important to tell you. Won't you let me in? All I have to do is say yes to the infinite presence. Come in. The Christ within says to me so lovingly, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I hear that whispered sentiment in my ear right now. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. I bathe in the light of that love from the infinite presence. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. The God of my being is always saying this to me. I open my spiritual ears right now to hear. now if you will open your eyes and we will say together be our Father. Together please. Our Father who is everywhere. Your name is sacred. Your kingdom is come. Your will is throughout the earth even as it is throughout the universe. You give us our equal bread from day to day. And you forgive us our offenses even as we forgive our offenders. And you let us not enter into materialism, but you separate us from error, 
because yours are the kingdom, the power, and the song and praise for all ages, throughout all ages. Seal the day and progress and truth. Amen. Amen. So I have a question for you. Do you trust the wisdom and ingenuity of God? Do you tell the infinite presence exactly how you would like your prayer to be answered? Well, Jesus said when you pray, believe that you have it. What could be more direct than that? That is an instruction. He does not mention begging or pleading with God to give you what you want. Of course, prayers are all not about a long list of what I want either. So Jesus says that we need to become like a little child if we would enter the kingdom. Well, what is the kingdom and where is it? The kingdom is the realm of divine ideas, and it is perfect harmony within each one of us. So the kingdom is also right here, right now. We don't have to get our backpack on and our water bottle and our map and go out looking for it, because it is right here. We don't have to search out there at all. So, how do you have the expectancy of a little child? How do we actually accomplish that? Well, I'm going to describe to you the consciousness of a three or four year old. Before they go to school, and before they end up being influenced by all the stuff out there, before they read a newspaper, before they can even read, you know, before they even you know, are exposed to people at church, let's say. So like within their family unit, they're three or four years old. So, so I want you to like you to listen to these qualities, and I want you to see, do I still have these? Okay, here we go. They are not worried about what other people think about us. Already, we're done, right? <laughs> That's the first one. I have 20 listed here. We all care about what others think about us, don't we? It's a hard one to overcome. Okay, so... They wear weird clothes that don't match, and they even wear costumes to the grocery store shopping with mom. They are not looking to see who is wearing designer diapers. <laughs> right? They are very trusting. There is no manipulation. They are not vain, cocky, or proud. They are not critical or judgmental. They always want to be helpful, even when you don't need it. There is no concept of getting even. They see wonder in everything, everywhere. There is no deceit, no hypocrisy, no envy. They are not trying to impress anyone, which of course is obvious by the fact of the clothes that they like to choose. They are not putting on airs. Their actions are their own. They are always authentic <coughs> and organic in every moment. You will never catch a four-year-old saying, Do these pants make my butt look big, Mommy? No, not. Those words have never been uttered by a four-year-old, I promise you. They have the ability to dream big. They are extremely self-confident. If I said to a little four-year-old, oh, you can't move that table, it's too big for you. And he would say, yes, I can because I'm as big as it is. Confidence, just oozing. They are fearless. They are always forgiving. They don't even know what the word forgive means. They hug a lot. They are fully present in the now, and they do not worry about tomorrow. They always seem to be enjoying themselves. They're very creative. They have a sense of discovery. There are no social rules holding them back, which is obvious by their behavior. They're spontaneous. They are just incredibly teachable. They are open-minded. They are curious. They are totally dependent on their parents. They are easily entertained, as we all know, and they say it like they see it. No holes barred. So let's examine these a little tad bit closely. So are you still like any of these things I just mentioned right now in the moment? Okay, pretend you're in class. How did this list make you feel? Come on, I want some feedback. How did that, I saw a lot of you smiling, shaking your head, nodding. How did that list make you feel when you heard me saying all that stuff? So you can you you actually feel like you're embracing a lot of those things still, Rick? I do. Good. Not all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to. There were well, I like to say we're in the process of, right? We are, the more conscious we become, the more we can be in the process of getting back that little child 
like feeling. So, um, anybody else like to share? Come on, well, how did that list make you feel, Pam? Excellent. <laughs> Score. Yay, okay. So, I did not share this list with you to make you feel inadequate in any way. <laughs> it is simply a reminder of what some of us might have lost in the translation of before, and then going through teenagehood, oh my gosh, right? And then coming into fully adulthood. So um, we've lost some of that in the way that we used to see the world. So this little child does not agonize over anything. Not until they go to preschool or pre-pre-preschool. I don't even know how old they go. They go to school now anymore. I think it's like three. Until they figure out that somebody has a better lunch than they do. How did that thought even get into their head? I have no idea. Um, adults actually seem to agonize over just about everything, not trusting, really, that our good is going to come to us. So, God says, I have weapons ye know not of. I am ingenious. My methods are sure. Trust me. Commit to me, and I will take care of you. Now, those words, I will take care of you, are not coming from up there somewhere in this place called heaven. Because God is not outside. God is within. I'm talking about the source. The God within. I am here and God is here. When my friend Marty first told me those words, I was stunned. <coughs> because I was raised with, and all I heard was, I'm here, God oh, is in my microphone. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold on. I'm here, God's over there. Way over there, way up there, somewhere. Some ethereal place that I'm not even going to ever get to because I don't know how to behave. I got a lot of black spiders on my charts in Catholic school. <laughs> I was the impertinent ones asking the questions that the nuns said. They don't tell us that. <coughs> so one way to, to, the one way to access this relationship with the God within is to follow our intuition. So the spiritual faculty that we all possess is above the intellect. It is the still small voice, the hunch, the gut, that gut feeling that we get. These all say to us, this is the way, walk ye in it. That is from Isaiah. That is divine guidance. So who follows the intellect most of the time? Raise your hand. I do. Who follows your intellect most of the time? Okay. So if it makes sense, it must be right, right? Always choosing what is practical over what feels right. That, 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 would, that would be our sense of our intellect. Most of us follow the reasoning mind, which is, I think, the long, hard road of experience. And our culture does not support our feelings. It wants hard, cold facts. So I'm suggesting that we take the road less traveled and that we practice following our intuition. So we don't want to miss out on the moments that don't make sense, but they feel right to us in that moment. So, but will you take the time to listen? You see, that's what it takes. So that's why we practice meditation. It prepares us to hear the still, small voice. So we have the superconscious mind, which I'm going to say is up here, because i got three levels happening here. That's our intuition. Superconscious mind is that within me which knows. I love that little phrase. That within me which knows what I need to know right now. All I have to do is tune in. It's right there. We have the conscious mind, which is us being aware of, of where we are and that we're sitting here and what we're doing. Okay, we are all conscious of that. At least I hope. Unless someone's sleeping. Anyone sleeping? No. Okay. And the subconscious mind is a power which carries out the ideas that we put into it. That is where our beliefs reside. I'm just here to tell you that there is a divine design. There is a spiritual prototype of our body and our affairs. The perfect idea of us in the superconscious mind. Okay, if your body and your affairs are in perfect harmony right now, well, raise your hand. You're kidding. <laughs> but we can get there we can so I see most of us are not expressing the divine design we're, we're willing to admit it right 
Well, but why? Why are we not expressing this divine design? It's there. I know it's there. Well, I'm going to tell you why. It's because we put pictures of old age, disease, death, poverty, and lack into our subconscious mind. And it has taken hold and out pictured because the subconscious mind can only follow our instructions. It has no power of its own. It will never say to you, stop thinking like that. It will never chastise you for negative thinking or for trying to buy something that you clearly cannot afford. So it will never give you good advice or bad advice, for that matter, because it can't. So let us put, I would like to suggest we put new pictures and new ideas in our subconscious mind consciously. All right, so they will go in there and that's how we change our life. So this is really exciting. This is good news. So we're going to say this together. I'm going to say it first. Let me now express the divine idea in my mind, body, and affairs. Together? Let me now express the divine idea in my mind, body, and affairs. Okay, do you feel any different? Anybody? <laughs> well, you just have to keep saying it. We're not saying it to make it true. We're saying it because it is true. It is true about us, even though we can't see it right now in the outer. It is actually built in to the soul. It is built into who we are. So if you want to change anything about your life, you have to change your thoughts about it. So our negative thoughts are entrenched in our subconscious mind. And that is what is defeating the manifestations that we would like to see in the outer. So newsflash, thoughts are things. Every metaphysician I've ever read says exactly the same thing. Thoughts are things. We have built up certain thoughts until they have become fixed in our mind. We meet them as the outer experiences of our life. Well, but how do they become fixed? I'm going to tell you. Okay? Here it comes. So a thought comes in, go, comes in one ear, goes out the other. You've heard your mother say that a million times when you were young, right? Oh, it just comes in one ear and goes out the other. Okay, those thoughts are not, they're nothing. They just, they pass on by. So let's say that you keep thinking that thought more than once. Twice, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times. So the first time it comes in, it goes out, nothing happens. But as soon as you think that same thought again, I like to say that it starts a little tiny pigeonhole in your mind. Oh, you've said it 10 times. There's this little tiny pigeonhole right here. But you keep saying it. And then you become, you believe it. And then that pigeonhole gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and now it holds a big space in your mind. Not in your brain, because this would actually take up probably most of my brain right there. I'm talking about your mind, not your brain. It gets so big because you have focused on it so much that it actually cannot help itself. Whatever that thought can be manifested outside of yourself, it will burst into existence and you can't stop it. Because it comes to us by law, not by chance. Because there are no accidents. And you guessed it. Here's why. We create like God creates. From the invisible to the visible. From the idea to the form. Here's an example. An architect gets a, an, an idea in, in their mind about a building that they really want to create. So they meditate on it, they think about it, they get, they get visualizations about it, and then they get somebody to, or they themselves, I suppose, they put it on paper, they block it all out, they know what the materials are going to be, so, so it's in this, still it's in this idea realm, and then they get somebody to build it. So somebody actually builds from the idea. So we've got the idea here, which is invisible, and then it becomes the building, which is the visible. God creates just that same way. It all starts invisible and moves to the visible. So, what are you consciously building up in your consciousness? Or it could be unconsciousness. Unconsciously building up in your consciousness. Does it sound like this? <sighs> Life is hard and filled with disappointment. I can never do anything right. It will never happen for me. Things always go wrong in my life. I am so unlucky. I can't afford it. I never have enough time. The whole world is against me. 
or something similar to that. Okay, here's the zinger. Listen carefully. Words cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. <laughs> Did you like it, Jerry? Or are you throwing up over there? No, I'm fine. He's good fine. He's good fine. He's like, oh, no. Really? Yes. Listen to that. Words cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. Because words are energy. When you say a thing out loud to someone, you can't unsay it and they can't unhear it. Like you cannot unring a bell because the energy has already left the building. It's already been released. So, I thought y'all would like that one. I'll say it again. Words cast spells. That's why it's called spelling. Okay? So, I have a handout which Pam is going to uh, give to everybody. And it has a... Two columns. One uh, column on the left shows us phrasings and sentencings that we may use now. And on the right, it says suggestions of how to say it better, how to release better energy about, but it's the same idea, but it's more positive. It's a more positive way to say something. How many times have we ever said, don't forget to lock the door, don't forget to be at the airport on time, don't forget to blah, blah, blah. No. The better way to say that is, remember to lock the door, because that's the positive of what you want them to do. Because if you say, don't forget, what is the last word they hear? Forget. <laughs> so by saying remember to, instead of don't forget to, that is a more positive way to release that energy about what you actually really want to happen. So I just would like you to take a couple minutes and I want you to, to read through the list. You might be familiar with some of these. I was hoping I meant the ones on the right. <laughs> What's on the Okay, so when you look at this list, especially the ones on the left, and then you see the, the better way to say it, can you agree with most of these that, that, that that's a better way of, to release the energy of what you really want to say to somebody? Instead of saying, don't run, you just say, please walk, <laughs> because that's the actual instruction, because that's what you want them to do. But the don't run always makes kids run way faster. <laughs> I mean, they, you can see them speeding up when you say don't run. And you know, don't run around the pool. Oh no, they run faster. Okay, so who would like to share a comment about this list that you're seeing? Is it helpful? Yeah. Yes. Pam says number 27 to me all the time. <laughs> Say that again, Jerry. I am saying number 27 to me all the time. Oh, do you know what's wrong with you? Oh. <laughs> That's funny. She doesn't exactly say it in those words. <laughs> well, Jerry, I think I've learned my lesson. That's <laughs> right. From now on, I will want to hear the right hand side. That's right. Do you know what I like about you, Jerry? Yeah. There you go. There, that's wonderful. 
<laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> well, I will say back, I choose to. <laughs> so, we will make that change. <laughs> Good. You can practice it, right? This is just a list for you all to practice. You know, have a look at it. Read. I would actually like for you to serious, take this list seriously. Think of your words as energy. Um, I actually say a lot of words. <laughs> as you all know. And um, there are always things I want to change. You know, so and, and some things are hard habits to break, but um, I just think this is a fabulous list. So I would really like for everybody to, to, to pick one thing here, something that you on the left that you do say a lot. Try to change it to the one on the right to make it come out more positively. And then I would like for you, I'm going to be here next Sunday, just like everybody else, I hope. And I would like you to tell me your experience with how that felt, like in your mouth, in your head, in your mind. That you change, that you took conscious effort to change how you said something. Now I know Bob's going to do that because he puts glasses on so he could read this. <laughs> okay, so, so he's taking it seriously, right? That's right. So I expect to hear something out of you next week, Bob. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. All right. Anybody else like to say something about this? They'd like to share. Like somebody tell me one of these ones on the left that you really use a lot. I can't read the list right now, but I know all of. All of us who happen to have uh, reared or brought forth teenagers know that negative reinforcers don't ever work. Yeah, why, like don't run. <laughs> why, why the hell are you dating that guy? You know, that, that, <laughs> that's that, not good. That, no, that's not good. Try to, try to find the good qualities in the person that you're with is probably a better way to, to handle it. Well, that dad could say to his daughter, tell me what you like about George. Yes, yeah. Very good. Thank yeah. you, Dale. Appreciate that. Okay. You know what? She'll tell me, too. <laughs> That's his problem. She'll tell me, too. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about John? <laughs> yeah, and Heather both. Oh, both. <laughs> okay. All right. So the first step towards successful living is actually being glad to be you. Being glad to be yourself, right? In the 1930s, a, a song came out in London called I'm Tickled to Death, I'm Me. I actually wanted to play it for you today, but they actually recorded it on YouTube from an actual, you know, um, record player, and the, the record itself was from the 30s, and so it was so scratchy, and you couldn't really hear it, but I listened to it a couple of times, and it's just, it's just, it was just very, it was very clever and funny. But it's, I'm tickled to death on me. I'd rather have the name be, I'm tickled to be me, not to death. <laughs> I'll not say that. Um, so I encourage you to meditate, to slow down, to do absolutely nothing, to stare into space. Society doesn't like it when, when it thinks that we're not being productive all the time, right? But just sit, contemplate the universe. And my mother used to say, what are you doing contemplating your navel? No, Mom, I'm meditating. Go away. So, enjoy being you. Enjoy trusting God. Trust your intuitive leads. Practice doing just that. Because every time you say, Jesus, I need a parking space, and one opens up, that's one. <laughs> I'm just giving you a funny example. I'm just saying that by being conscious, I mean, even consciously talking to God all day long, things will start to happen. And then that, that, that builds another thing like your spiritual bank account. That will build up. And your intuition will be so much more alive. Okay? Because every time you, you actually followed an intuitive lead, it builds up and builds up and builds up. And so your relationship with, with what, whatever you choose to call God will get stronger and stronger and stronger. So, so stop using your intellect to think through every single thing, thinking that every that thinking will solve every single life problem that you might have with your rational thinking. So, practice to trusting your inner guidance. And I want you to remember that the omnipresence of God is imminent and available to each one of us all the time. So let's get still for a moment. God says, I have weapons ye know not of. 
I have ways that will astound you. So I choose right now to let God work through me, to astound me. And when God says, this is the way, walk ye in it, I will say yes. I choose to listen to that still, small voice that, all, that is always there, ready to guide me. If only I will take the time to listen. I say yes right now to the divine plan, which is in place for me and for all. And we all affirm together, and so it is.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Jan has a few announcements. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Nancy. It was nice to see you back up here after five years. So we might do it again. <laughs> okay. We're not going to wait five years. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It was a good message. Thank you. And thank you, Pam, for stepping up and doing the computer. And it's good to have you back this morning. So it's very good to have you. A smiling face back there, even though I can't see the But anyhow, it's good to have you back. Um, the flowers today are sponsored by Jerry and arranged by Nancy, and they're beautiful. So, uh, if, as you know, we said uh, we're going to, Nancy's going to start doing the flowers. So, if you sponsor them, please give her the money the week before so she'll have the money to sign, sign up. Sign up, okay. Sign up in, in sign up. on the sign up sheet, and uh, she's keeping her little receipt book there so she'll know who paid who didn't she'll come after you <laughs> but no she did a wonderful job so we appreciate you doing that very much so um, anyhow uh, the other thing is the ballots for the uh, the two officers have to be in by next Sunday so if you have not voted and you're a member please do so either by mail or put them in the ballot box over here so make sure that that's done by next Sunday uh, also, uh, we've been uh, we talked our project for this year is going to be to replace the floor in the annex. So we are in the process of getting uh, some bids. We have three. I think we're going to get at least one more, maybe two more, to see uh, what the price is going to be. Right now, they're, we, they're ranging from, what, 6000 Six to 14000 So It's uh, a big range. Anyhow. Uh, <laughs> So anyhow, we will, uh, we're still working on that, but it will be our project for, for this year. It's been, um, we've been wanting to do it for like four or five years, and this just hasn't happened, but it will happen this year. So uh, there you go. Uh, and uh, other than that, uh, do the board, uh, the ones that are here, well, you're here, so I need to talk to you for like three minutes after church uh, sometime real fast. So other than that, did you have anything? Are you going to have class Wednesday? I'm, I'm, are yeah. we? Yeah. No, I just wanted to announce that um, on uh, June the 20th, I'm going to start a class in New Testament. Mm -hmm. And I have a sign-up sheet for anybody who would be interested in participating, either just uh, to audit or to take it for credit. What so. day of the week is that? Monday. Monday, Monday. Monday night. So she's going to do Monday night class. You okay. could put it in either in the evening or like... Uh, uh, I night. have 3 o'clock, 3.30, 4 o'clock, 4.30. It'll be a people who, you know, which is most convenient for the most number of people. Okay. All right. Well, so when will be, what time will the first class be, though? Because they all have to come at the same time. Well, I guess, I guess time. she's going to wait to see who's going to sign up first. Oh, to, gotcha. And let them decide. I guess that's what you're thinking. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that's a scary thought we're thinking. I'm like, ooh, that's not good. <laughs> Okay, I don't have anything else. Does anybody else have anything? I do, again, appreciate everything that everybody does for this church. Uh, you know, as Nancy says, it's not always about the money. I, I know that pays the bills and everything, which is wonderful. But so many people give their time and other things to this church uh, that makes a huge difference and makes things so much easier for all of us. And so uh, I know I don't always get to say thank you to each person individually, but it is... Um, I'm very grateful for everything that everybody does around here, uh, everything. So thank you again. Take this off. Keep going. Next. Keep going. Next. There we go. Okay. So we have started saying a the prayer of protection, which comes from unity. Um, and this is this this prayer as you as we're saying it together. I want you to think about the people of Ukraine, all the peacekeepers who are trying to make peace come about, and also for Russia, because they all need our prayers. So let us say this together. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. The mind of God guides you. The power of God abides in you. The strength of God renews you. Wherever you are, God is, and all is well. Thank you. So I'd like for us to take a few moments now to pray for America, to pray for uh, what's happening here. But I don't want you to think about what's happening here. 
I want you to let that go. I want you to not focus on the outer appearance of what seems to be happening. I want you to focus on the truth of, of what we know. Metaphysically, we know that God is good all the time. When we look out there, we're not sure what that looks like because it doesn't feel that way right now. But we know in our own consciousness that we must embrace the truth, the actual truth of that. That God of our being knows everything. So let's just take a few moments, just a moment. I invite yourself, I invite you all, to allow yourself to be in a totally receptive mood to accept this blessing. May the angels of heaven protect you this day and encircle you with the fragrance of peace. May the Christ within, the Lord of your being and loving friend, protect you and encircle you with love, affection, and joy. Infinite Presence, as we go forth this day, we know that you are in every step we take, every thought we think, every word we say. And let us affirm together with great enthusiasm, and so it is. So go in peace, my friends, and make it a great day. Do you want to go downstairs? Do you want to go downstairs? Yeah.